What is up, my dudes? Back at it again with another video. Um, it is Dino Day, and I'm really excited. Well, tomorrow is Dino Day. Today is uh, the day before. Uh, I'm in the shop right now. I'm going to get this car set up and ready for the dyno. Uh, but I just want to give you guys a little run through on what all was done to the car. So, car in question is my buddy Hector's D to B Viterra EG Hatch. Um, this thing has a D16 Street Savage um, camshaft from Speed Factory. VTEC is locked. Um, so, I did basically all of this work other than the bolting the engine trans and building the motor and stuff like that. It is a plateless D to B setup. I did all of the intercooler piping, um, cut the intercooler on the back side and made it a back door. Um, down pipe, made it to the full exhaust. I did the full fuel system. So 8 a.m. feed and return. We got a flex fuel sensor set up um, for that. We have a set of 1400cc Snake Eater Performance Genuine Bosch injectors. Um, made a fuel filter bracket with the fuel filter bolted to it. Catch can lines, um, routed the boost controller. Uh, what else did I do? Um, added some grounds. Whole bunch of work has been done to this thing over the last quite a bit of time, about a year or so. Um, we got a spall fan on it, so it should stay cool. Um, it has a Skunk 2 Ultra Race manifold with a two liter spacer and a 90 millimeter throttle body. He's gonna straight the car, but this thing is ready to make some power. It has a three inch from the turbo compressor housing to the uh, intercooler and then three and a half inch from the intercooler out to the throttle body, which like I said, is a 90 millimeter. So. Um, this thing is literally ready to make some power. Eventually, we'll go uh, all-wheel drive with it, but uh, for now, he wants to enjoy it. I think our limiting factor, if it's not the clutch, is going to be the injectors, because we are going to be running it on ethanol. So, um, we're gonna do a flex fuel tune, obviously. It's on pump 93 right now. The wastegate is like 12, 13 pounds. Um, I've street driven it a little bit, and it, it, it feels really good. This. This camshaft is fantastic, especially for these um, D16s. This camshaft, I have the limiter, limiter at 8,000 right now, and the cam is actually advanced five and a half degrees, so it will <laughs> idle with enough vacuum, so it's not like stupid. It idles about 1,500, 1,600 RPMs. So I have the cam advanced five and a half degrees. We can go back to zero, and it'll probably climb RPMs to about almost 9,000. The head is ported, so that'll definitely aid in power as well. I'm thinking we might run 18 pounds on pump gas, maybe make 330 or something or more. And then on ethanol, 25 pounds maybe, see what it makes. We should make a whole bunch more power just from the fuel switch. So, <clears throat> it is a Viterra build, like I said, but it is a stock length Eagle Rod Viterra build. So it is a lower compression motor, but it is what it is, and we're going to make some fucking power, bruh. So like I said, we do have the ethanol sensor in, so we are going to be running um, a flex fuel blend. Um, right now it's on 93, and we'll see what it see what it does. I do have a Link G4 knock block that I am going to use to listen to the engine so that I can hear if it's knocking. Um, with that setup, I have a stud that bolts into the stock knock sensor location and bolts on a genuine Bosch knock sensor that I can bolt onto it. Plug my knock block into it and then plug in a set of mono headphones, which is just the sound and no microphone. And you can listen to the sound the engine makes and I can listen for knock on the dyno. Um, I'm also gonna check the plugs, but mostly I'm gonna be listening for knock with my headphones. Um, it does have a set of um, uh, NGK 8s, uh, BKR 8 EIX, I think, it's their iridiums. Um, we're going with that just because that's what was in it, and we have a few other sets with that as well. Um, I also relayed the fan. I put the battery out here. I made a bracket for it, so the battery is in the fan and bumper. Um, and I mounted the catch can up here as well. Um, for gauges, obviously we installed 
a wide band. We have we have boost pressure, which I have on the manifold, oil pressure, and we have the AFR gauge. All works as stock, and it has a push button start. So I'm excited. We were facing an issue with the ECU. Um, the board had actually got messed up from a leaky capacitor, and it wouldn't prime the fuel pump. So we got that S300 switched to a different ECU. Now it primes each and every single time. So we're good there. Today I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna change the oil. So we're prepared for tomorrow, cause I want fresh oil. I've had a lot of cold starts and stuff and it was you know, somewhat rich. I don't want the oil to be thinner cause we're about to make some power so we need the oil to be prime. Um, I'm also going to test the ethanol content. So back when I was um, really diving into this car and doing all the uh, fab and stuff, I picked up this uh, Rev X Super Tester ethanol kit Basically, we fill water up to here, and then we fill fuel up to this red line, shake it up, let it sit, and then we can see our ethanol content. So I got the 11 gallons of ethanol from my local uh, sheets, and we're gonna test it right now and see what the ethanol comes back as, so. All right, so I filled to the water line with water and filled the rest with fuel, and it looks like we're between 80 and 85%, and this isn't necessarily flat, so I'm gonna say we're probably like 82, 83% ethanol which is fantastic getting that from the pump. It says it can be anywhere from um, E51 to E85. So being 82, 83% ethanol is fantastic for us. Um, it, we do have about half a tank of fuel in there. So we're gonna do our pulls on pump gas, dial it in. Hopefully we don't use too much, but hopefully we use enough that we can throw in our ethanol and get as close as we can to E85 as possible. So that's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna get a quick oil change in here, but I wanna give you guys just a little cold start of the um, pump gas. It, uh, like I said, VTEC is locked, so first start, I have to hold the throttle open because we also don't have an idle air control valve. Push start, get pump primes, get live with the ECU, let the wideband come online. I haven't really figured this out yet, but I. Oil pressure gauge says eight PSI when there's none. So I'm kind of confused about that, but yeah. All right, I'm gonna prime the fuel one more time, get live. It's at about 13 or 14, but I had to advance the cam five and a half degrees to get it to idle as good as it will once it's warmed up. But go ahead, try and back off this throttle real quick. See if it will idle, and it will. Cool. Listen to this exhaust a little bit. Once it warms up, it sounds a little bit better, but. Let this thing warm up and catch back up. All right, we are getting there on temp about 160. I'm gonna let this thing warm up like all the way, but you can see where it's idling, about where it's idling right now. 13 inches of mercury, about 13 there. And it idles, because it does fluctuate just a little bit without having an idle air control valve and it's VTEC locked. Um, it'll, it'll vary between like 12.8 and 14.2 AFR. Not, not like crazy, like right now it's pretty steady. It's staying at like 12.8, 13.0, and then it'll just, it'll just slightly move depending on the RPM that it's at. But bring you outside. It doesn't really chop too much at the moment. Once once it uh, warms up all the way and it gets a little leaner, then it'll add a little bit more chop. But I love the way this thing sounds, and it's gonna smell entirely better, so much better with the ethanol in it, man. I can't wait. Can't wait for two steps. 
step and everything. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Hector's happy, bro. He, I can't wait till he sees this video. Bro, this thing's about to make some power. Hopefully, it all goes well and um, the clutch holds. So, I'm excited. <laughs> Alright, I didn't actually change the oil. Um, the oil looked fine and there wasn't any um, like condensation in it or anything. So, we're gonna. We're just gonna leave it and we'll change the oil when we get back um, if we need to probably do that anyways I did clean up the catch can uh, there wasn't really much in it either but there was some uh, condensation in there I cleaned that out and now I'm just gonna get everything set up for tomorrow so that I can show up with the dolly pick it up and we can be on to the dyno so see y'all at the dyno all right so real quick before we actually get to the dyno um this is my link knock block. This is how I listen to knock on the motor. So this has a headphone jack that you plug headphones in and you turn the volume up with this. And it has one plug, it has two plugs for two banks if you're running like a V motor, like a V8, V6, whatever, and you want to run two sensors. But I just need one. So um, it has a harness that gets ran into the car. One side, looks like that. Plugs into here. And then the other side goes back to the stock knock sensor location and it has one of these plugs on it. It looks like an injector clip and it bolts on to a Bosch knock sensor which is then bolted to the motor and I can listen to it. So uh, I'm getting everything ready here. I'm going to go grab the truck and we'll be on our way to the dyno so <laughs> I'll see you guys there. Alright boys so we all loaded on the dyno. I got my brother here to help. I'm gonna be the camera guy for today. And um, we are shot down. So the gate's on 13 pounds, and we're gonna see what it makes. I'm gonna get some heat in the engine and do our first pull. And we'll see what it makes. Hopefully, it makes good power. Uh, I'll get my knock gears in and listen, and hopefully, everything goes according to plan. two pools there cleaned up some of the fuel we so far we've made 252 on 13 pounds it is a um, stock length rod by Terra build with a street savage cam and I'm only revving it to eight it looks like it's basically peaking um, I do have the cam advanced a little bit so we could probably make more power if I were to retard the cam um, timing so um, contemplating doing that just to pick some more up on the top end. Um, but it's coming in pretty good. So I think the clutch, hopefully not, but I think the clutch might be slipping. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna add some timing, see if it picks up. And if it does, um, I'm going to turn up the boost from there. So uh, yeah, let's get going. two degrees in at 12 pounds and we did pick up power we picked up 10 horsepower that's not a whole lot so i'm going to take a degree out but it did pick up everywhere from 6,000 on so it's only where as soon as the boost comes in that's where i'm basically trying to add the timing in um like i said before we're only revving to eight and it is peaking but it's making pretty good power for um 13 pounds or 12 13 pounds and um 100 and 
45 degree intake air temp so variety so i have the boost controller turned on now i have 31 percent in it so we're gonna see what we make uh probably i'm gonna say it's probably gonna be 14 pounds maybe we'll see but here we go degrees I'm gonna do one more pull listen for knock if it doesn't knock uh, I'm just gonna up the boost because we're still on pump gas so let's see what we got percent duty cycle into the gate and we really didn't pick up any power uh, 281 it went up to I think it touched 15 psi so I'm gonna change the Hertz duty cycle on the controller and we'll see what happens there um, hopefully we can make like 19 pounds we'll see on 16 pounds 294 on I think it was then 16 right now it's on 18 and it made it made 302 which just we can't see because it's it's down here uh, I'm gonna get rid of get rid of some of the files and then we can see the, the last two files okay so we made this was 13 or 14 pounds this was 16 286 and then we made 302 at 18 pounds I'm gonna add two degrees of timing, um, see if it picks up any, and then if it does or doesn't, if I hear knock, go from there, turn up the boost a little bit more, maybe make 20, 23 pounds. This thing's breathing pretty well. For a really low compression, it's making pretty good power. Um, so yeah, see what happens. And then um, I don't know how high I wanna go with boost on pump gas, but we'll start doing the ethanol and we we'll should see it pick up quite a bit. So let's go.
back-to-back -back runs ones with two degree more timing right here 315 and then i took one degree out and made 304 so i presume that's probably because it was pulled down in between that um i put one degree back we should be fine there and i'm going to turn up the boost again see if we can make 21 pounds on pump gas and then we can you know turn it up from there with the uh, ethanol once we get in there so i hope this thing makes all the power like seriously <laughs> as well see what that looks like and then um, do one more pull and we can see uh, what the ethanol is looking for I'm gonna do one fourth gear pull just to see if it picks up anything or if it has a different number or whatever. Um, after that, then we're gonna switch over to ethanol and um, get that dialed in, and hopefully we can make some uh, make some more power, turn up the boost, maybe 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 30 pounds. We'll see. All right, real quick, I did want to mess with the cam gear and the timing. So it was four and a half degrees advanced. I just now took three and a half degrees of advance out of it so it is one degree advanced i'm going to reset the ignition timing and then um we're going to make a pull and see what happens um to the power i'm hoping it carries that way i can move the limiter up 500 rpm and we can have a better pull longer pull but we'll see i'm going to set the ignition timing and we'll make a pull all right so like i said i set it to one degree advance instead of plus four and a half and our power looks really weird now, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna go back. And it is what it is. And now we just go to ethanol. Alright, one fourth gear pull, see if the power changes or anything, and then we'll add ethanol. being um, a lower compression motor than Carlos's, we still made about the same power, 342, um, and that's at higher RPM too, so um, 
we're making technically more power if had the same compression ratio so and this is 21 pounds so uh yeah time for ethanol the fueling's right add some timing into it see what we pick up and toss some boost into it see what that does the boost but this is kind of making like annoying me at the same time like four runs in a row at the same exact power with more ethanol more timing so kind of sucks but I'm gonna try and figure this out that's why it broke up but it stood up really nice as you can see there uh, we, so far we've made 395 almost 400 that one was on the way to probably 410 so we're gonna run that back I raise the boost cut and uh, yeah to 28 29 pounds of boost and i think we're breaking up so i'm gonna gap the plugs down to 20 thousandths they're at 25 right now and uh, make another pull hopefully it's clean um once we get to about probably 30 pounds i'm just gonna call it um honda is not perfect for this you can get the Flex fuel maps set up pretty decent, but it's not perfect. Um, ideally, you would want a table for each ethanol percentage and it can, you know, fluctuate between it, interpolate between it. And that's not how uh, on data has it set up. Basically just says like a, add this much more timing for ethanol and it's globally over the whole map. And that's, it doesn't, doesn't work great that way, so. Uh, I'm gonna gap the plugs down. We'll do another pull. See, see if we can get over that 400 mark, and um, maybe do one fourth gear pull. Let's see what's up. That 
that was eventful. Uh, so we made 440, basically, on 26 pounds. The cool down definitely helps. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get to 30 pounds, see what we can make, and do a fourth gear pull to overlay it, make sure everything's good. Bump in a few more, um, you know, percentage of duty cycle, and we should be Gucci, so. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see what this has. If we make if we make 500, I'm gonna be fucking. I'm gonna be tripping balls. I don't think we're gonna make 500, but we'll see. one was a cool down and it spun it spun the tire so that's why I think that was that high shock there but uh I'm gonna let it cool down make uh, one hit in third let it cool down make one hit in fourth and we're probably done um the tank is full of fuel and I can only get to E60 at the moment so we can't get the 85 ethanol percent dialed so it is what it is but it's making great power this is freaking awesome this cam is really doing work again so we just <laughs> strapped it even tighter bro we might make 500 Let's see how this goes all right that made 460 at 30 pounds so let's add more boost um, if it spins, we're going to do a fourth gear pull, and that'll probably be about it. We just made, it is hot, and I just um, ran it twice. So, we made 470? I have 33 pounds, um, and I am going to uh, let it cool down, and I'm gonna make a fourth gear pull, and hopefully, hopefully that gives us 30 horsepower. All right, we're gonna do one final pull. It's gonna be a fourth gear pull. Hopefully, we make close to 500. That'd be fantastic, and then we'll work on two step, and we'll be out of here. Two pounds yielded us 480, and I tried to do a fourth gear pull, and it slipped the clutch. So 
What that means, honestly, is we need a clutch, but it's also probably loaded harder on the dyno, so on the street it may not slip. We're gonna find out. Um, but 480 in third gear, that's pretty good numbers. And like Rolo said, it would probably make the 500 if I had the RPM, the clutch held, it wasn't like, you know, tied down so hard and um, we had better temps. I mean, it's hot in here. So this car, I'm gonna say it makes 500, but on paper it makes 480, oh, on screen, it makes 480 at 32 pounds, which uh, I, I'm stoked. I'm happy, I'm fucking excited. We're on E60. We could get ethanol E85 in here and the injectors are at 70% right now, so we might not get any much more out of it, but he'll be able to run this thing on ethanol and have all the fun with it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. 480 on 32 pounds. Big thanks to this guy for having two hour, half hour of sleep and then coming with me. Appreciate you. Do what we gotta do, man. Uh, I'm excited, I'm Big happy. Yeah, and like I said, it's probably gonna make 500 if it hooks and if the clutch doesn't slip and it's cooler temps. Like at night, it'll make 500. It's fucking awesome. So, um, yeah. Well, I'll close this video out at the shop. All right, boys. It is the next day. Um, I was tired, so I just came back, got everything wrapped up, and, and went home. So, um, it's nighttime now. I did go and drive this car a little bit, and. Um, I was having an issue with boost. I couldn't couldn't turn it up, and uh, ended up get, having a vacuum leak. Um, this coupler actually pushed off of the throttle body, so got that back on there. Um, I'm happy with the power it made. I'm actually really happy. I not a huge fan of the flex fuel tables with Honda, but it is what it is. We made it work. It's on E60. Um, in the map, I have compensated the E85 portion with the same amount of timing from e for E60 and uh, just more fuel. So if he ever does get pure uh, E85 or does get E85 in here, he should be fine. Um, I'm going to try to get most of this <laughs> driven out. He wants to drive it on pump gas a little so that he can get used to how it feels and get, get um, you know, used to the car and how it drives and stuff like that. So uh i'm gonna try and get some of this pump gas i mean um ethanol ran out for him before he comes this weekend also was having an issue with the bumper i just put a bolt in here and a nut to hold the bumper closed because the stock piece the bumper's under tension because of the big ass intercooler in the front it actually pulls it down uh some so this actually tugs down on the bumper so it is putting some stress on it. It like wants to pull it down and back. So um, I just put a bolt and a nut. Uh, hopefully that does not come out because if it does, the bumper will hang down. Anyways, the power was great. Um, I'm gonna, I might try to throw in here a few street pools of it turned up uh, if I do get them. But as for now, that is the end of this video. Um, I'm happy. I, I'm super excited for him to get this car back and drive it and have fun. Even on pump gas, 21 pounds making 341 wheel horsepower, which at night cooler weather might make 23 pounds, might make 360. So, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm super happy with it. Um, really can't wait for him to drive it. It's ready to go home and, uh, time to say farewell. I know I didn't really bring you guys any videos on this thing, but um, I put my all into this build. Um, I did my very best on everything that I could as far as the intercooler piping, catch can, fuel lines, everything that I touched, you know, I did my best and um, Hector's really happy with it. So that's all for this one, guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching them 40 dyno pulls. It was just about 40 dyno pulls that we did. Um, I'm going to get an oil change on this thing tomorrow and maybe get a pool in here. I'll show you guys. So I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Deuces. <clears throat> All right, guys. So I turned on the boost, uh, the duty cycle. Just want to make sure everything is working as it should. Um, and I have, I actually set up the, um, hopefully set up the rolling anti-lag correctly. So I'm gonna try it real quick, see if it works. It's supposed to be at 5,500. Press the brake and it should work. <laughs> okay, it works. Woo! That was, uh, I, 
believe 18 pounds. That's fantastic. <laughs> that felt so good. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> she, I don't want to feel 32 pounds. For, uh, this car needs an alignment, so yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, oh my God, that felt so good. Holy fuck. I should have recorded it, I'll have to do another. But I looked down, it said 18 pounds. It's supposed to be around 21 pounds on this duty cycle, but it is 100, well, intake air temp says 103 degrees. Fuck, dude, that shit worked so well. I think we were building nine pounds on the uh, thing. That's fucking sick. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm done. This thing drives fairly well. Um, for being a locked VTEC and 90 mil throttle body. You can tell it's got a big throttle body at lower RPM. It gets into what well, basically um, full boost pressure right away basically. So uh, you gotta be really light on the throttle at low RPM. But it drives pretty well. It does vibrate a lot but I did up the duty cycle to 55% so we should be closer to 28 pounds. I'm gonna do a third gear up here, see what happens. So I'm basically just testing to see what boost we can leave it at um, and it doesn't spin the clutch. So I'm gonna wait till these cars get past me and I'm gonna do a pull right here. We're gonna do a third gear pull from 60 miles an hour. fender liner lost it knocked the corner marker out and it knocked the bumper down so <sighs> crazy uh i'm gonna get this thing sorted and then that's it for this one guys so like i said deuces